What's going on guys, I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. Welcome back to the channel. It's been a while since I've been out in the shop to do an actual large project, but that is what we're gonna get started today. And that large project is gonna be a desk for my mom. It's gonna go in kind of a unique space and we're gonna get rid of a couch. So we're gonna do a little demo. Gotta cut it up to get it out of the large park model trailer that she's staying in on the property. I just wanna make it a little nicer for her in there. She's been sitting at a table, it's you know an RV table, they're just not that great. So I wanna make a nice desk for her to sit out, look out the window, and uh, just be a little more at home in there. So let's get started on that. I'm gonna grab some six quarter alder down from the rack that's been sitting up there accumulating to the, sh accumulating? No, what's the word? I can't think of the word acclimating. It's been acclimating to the shop for months, which is just a fancy way of me saying I've been putting it off because it's hot. It's not hot now, actually. It's pretty nice. Anyway, huge thanks for Home Depot sponsoring this video. More on that later. Let's get to work. Now, let's see if I can get this down without dropping stuff or breaking anything. It's unlikely. Whoa, God. about fell off the ladder into the duster. How many of these do I need? Need to know the answers. Why are they different links? I don't remember how long ago I bought these. It's not recently. Probably six months. Oh God, I need to open the door. You know, I probably had a plan when I put these up here as to like which ones are for the top or which ones are for the legs or base, whatever you want to call it. And I cannot recall. I do remember when picking this wood up, there was not a very good selection. This one's pretty warped, so that's neat. That one's gonna have to be the base. <laughs> one more. Mm, nope, we're gonna leave that one because it's real warped. Weird. So apparently it's Naughty Alder. I can't remember. I guess I would have gotten Naughty Alder. It's much cheaper. We'll just fill that in with some epoxy. I know you guys have seen me do that before, but I will still take you through the process. All right, so what I got here is five boards that are the best ones, which this top one you can see is not. It's not great, but it'll be fine. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is take this blade out because the one that's in there is fine tooth for cross cutting. I used to not spend the time to change the blades, and then I started doing it and it makes a pretty big difference. So I got my handy dandy saw cabinet down here, which I have a video on if you guys wanna check that out. I'll leave that down in the description below. But I'll get this changed out and then we'll get to ripping these down to size. Real quick for you guys, I'm sure most of you know this, but here's three different types of blades. This one's for dedicated ripping, which is lengthwise. So it has much less teeth to clear the chips and get through that long grain quickly. Then you have a general purpose blade, which is like a 40 tooth, that's a 20 tooth. And this is for either cross cutting or, uh, you know, it's an all around blade. So if you want to save money and only get one blade, something like that is what you would need. And then this one's really good for plywood or cross cutting because it has 80 teeth and it has much less susceptibility for chip out. So I was doing some cross cutting, that's why that was on there, but I'm gonna throw on the ripping blade to get through this stuff as quick as possible. Actually, I remember I had my saw set to an angle, so I need to, Make sure it's 90. Uh, it's close enough. While the dust is settling, I figured I'd walk in here and show you guys where it's gonna go. This couch is getting out of here. We're gonna have to cut it up, get it out the door. That'll be kind of fun, probably. I'll definitely bring you guys along for that. But anyway, gotta get rid of the couch, probably get rid of these end tables, I'm not sure. And then that window and that window, the walls are actually angled. 
So we have to cut that to fit it in there. And then it'll be a nice big seven and a half foot desk with plenty of storage below. And she can look out the window and be on the computer and do whatever. So that's essentially what we're going for. All right, we got all the boards ripped to width. Now I'm over at the miter saw. I'm gonna cut them all the length. I'm gonna give myself a couple extra inches because there'll be some discrepancies when lining up and gluing up the boards. That way we can trim the edges and they'll be all flush at the final size that I want the desk to be. And I'm also gonna try to cut out a lot of the knots if I can. So let's get to doing that. All right, now that all the boards are cut to length, I'm gonna lay them out and see which orientation I wanna put them in. If you guys watched my how to build a desktop video, which is my most viewed video, so I assume most of you have, this is gonna be the same process. If you haven't checked it out, you can go check it out, but I'll kind of run through it here. So basically, there's a lot of myths and whatever. I don't know if they're completely accurate or not, but there's a lot of stuff like you want to alternate grain patterns. So if you got a grain pattern, if you're looking at the end of the board that's going this way, you want to make the next one go the other way. I, I try to do that, but I mean, I don't put like a huge amount of effort into it. I've done it both ways and I've had stuff warp both ways and I've had stuff stay flat both ways. But like I said, we're going to get these laid out and in the orientation I want, and then I'm going to number them so I don't forget and then draw some lines, put some biscuits in, you know the drill. All right, I think I figured out which side I want the top to be for each board. As you can see, this one has a huge gaping hole in it that I don't really want to deal with. Although this side has two and it's also not very flat. So, I don't know, we'll play with it. But now, since I have them like this, I'm gonna look at the grain. This one's going this way. This one's also going that way. That one's going down. This one's doing this up. This one's going down. So down, up, down, up, up, whatever. It'll be fine. So I'm gonna label them now. Just do one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four. I guess I'm labeling the joints more than the boards, but that way you just line up one and one, two and two, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I'm gonna do is get a square, mark lines across for biscuits, and we'll get those cut in also. I guess I should have mentioned, because I do in all my videos, that the lumber I get is already surfaced on three sides. So just that one rough side is all I really needed to cut off. Hopefully you can get it like that. It's way, it's so much easier. And you don't need all the big machines like the planer and joiner and stuff. I don't even have a joiner anymore. I actually sold it because I never use it because I buy lumber like this or I do slab work. So, you know, make it easier on yourself. I'll get these boards flipped around and what I'm gonna do is line up the center portion of this with these lines and cut all the biscuit joining spots. I don't know what they're called. The holes, we're gonna cut the holes and then we can put the things, you know? So get this flipped around. Forgot to mention one step, wax the clamps, which I just did and was talking the whole time, acting like I was talking to you guys, and uh, the camera wasn't on. So just pretend you saw me waxing these clamps. You can also use tape. I've used tape before, but the wax actually is cheaper, obviously, and it's easier. Helps your clamps slide a little bit better. You just don't want to put a ton because sometimes it could transfer onto the wood and cause finishing problems. It's just to the bottom side, but you don't really want that. So. Wax your clamps. While I'm gluing this up, I might as well tell you guys about the sponsor of this video, which is Home Depot. Super excited to be working with them. They provided the cordless blower you guys saw earlier by Ryobi. The thing is awesome, especially if you're cleaning out the shop, you don't have to drag around extension cords or startup gas blower, you know, anything like that. It's great for the sidewalk and things like that too. It has plenty of power and runtime, especially if you get the larger amp hour batteries. And what I'm really excited about, you guys are gonna be excited about too, I think, is they just came out, Ryobi them, being them, 
It come out with a track saw, which I have as well. Can't wait to put that to the test, cutting the ends off of this desk. We'll see how it goes. But huge shout out to Home Depot for sponsoring this video. If you guys wanna check out all the links down in the description below, you can check out the track saw, the blower, and all the other tools I've used in the past, as well as anything Home Depot sells. You guys go check them out, support an awesome company, and appreciate them for sponsoring. I'm getting glue everywhere. Usually I put down paper, I didn't do that this time. Just being lazy, you know. Somebody can do this without messing it up. It's got the glue. Get those lined up. All right, it's a couple days later, we're back out in the shop. I'm gonna get this out of the clamps, but not all the clamps, just the ones on the top and the ones on the ends because I'm gonna stand it up or flip it over and tape off the backside where there's knots or cracks or holes or anything. And I'm gonna flip it back over and then fill those with epoxy, let those cure overnight. And then we'll take it down to my friend's cabinet shop and run it through their wide belt because I like to cheat at this stuff. And I don't feel like sanding this whole thing by hand. When you have the resources, you gotta use them. That's a tip for you guys. If you guys do tops and things like that, plenty of cabinet shops around will rent out their wide belt or drum sanders for that. I mean, they'll charge you by the hour or if you have like a slab place around you, definitely check into that. So much better than trying to fl like flatten it for one and just sand it in general for two because they can get up to, you know, they, they do cabinets at 220 usually or 180, whatever. So you get pretty close and then just kind of finish it off by hand. It might cost you 50 bucks. Well worth the time. When I do this, I like to stand it up like this as long as it's fairly, you know, sturdy. Just be careful with that. But that way you can see the top and where the knots are that you need to fill. You don't have to spend a bunch of time taping off all the knots on the back because you may not need to. I've definitely taped off a bunch that I didn't need to. And I've also not taped off little tiny pinholes that ended up being knots on the other side and epoxy leaks through and gets everywhere and it's not, it's not good. So I only ended up having to tape off four spots, this spot and this spot, and these two don't show through to the top. The only other spots that are showing through on the top are tiny. So what I'll do with that is use CA glue and activator. So I'll just put the glue in, hit the activator and it cures it instantly. So it won't have time to leak through the bottom anyway. So we'll get this laid back flat and then we can mix up some epoxy and get in the knot holes. All right, so what I got here is some Total Boat high performance two to one epoxy. I will leave this link down in the description below for you guys to check out if you wanna get some for yourself. It's really good stuff. I like the high performance because it's a little bit more runny. It gets down into the bottom of those knot holes and cracks and everything a little bit better. I also use an oral syringe, which I'll link below too, and the tips. You can get different uh, millimeter tips, but that really helps you get down into the bottom and fill from the bottom up. You don't wanna fill from the top down, like just pour it in because a lot of times that'll create an air bubble on the bottom. And then when you go to sand it, it, it is hardened, but the air bubble stayed in there. And so you just have another open cavity you have to fill again. It's pretty annoying. So we'll get this mixed up, get it in the knots and move on. So the cool thing with these pumps, like I said, they're metered. So one pump to one pump makes it mix properly, you don't have to measure out anything. A couple key things when you're working with epoxy, especially if it's warm out, you wanna to try to hurry because the more condensed it is, the faster it's gonna flash and the hotter it's gonna get. So if you leave it in this cup right here and this gets hot, it's gonna expand that cup all crazy and bubble and get real hot to where you can't even touch it. So try to hurry up a little bit, but you wanna make sure it's mixed really good. And then just Get some in the syringe. Another really important thing, especially if you have larger cavities in the wood, you don't wanna fill them all at once. What you wanna do is do like a base layer. So I'm just gonna put a little bit in each one, let that drain down, maybe put a little bit more, 
and then I'm gonna let that cure so that way it gets a base layer so you're not putting all that volume and weight on the tape. And also it's a lot less likely that you will get uh, bubbles underneath that way. So I'm just gonna go through and put it in a base layer and then I'll let that cure for an hour or two and then come back and continue building up layers. So it's, it's not very exciting, but it's kind of fun. I'm gonna try to push that needle down. It's not really a needle, blunt nose needle down as far as you can. Like I said, try to fill from the bottom up. And then we'll let that sit. I got the top set aside, still in the clamps though. I don't want it to warp or anything. So now I'm gonna start cutting up wood for the base, bases. All right, I got all the pieces cut for the bases here. I'm gonna lay over a rendering so you guys can see exactly what we're gonna be making. It's gonna have a base on each side with two shelves per side. Kind of a minimal design because if we're being honest, I just, I hate building drawers, like a lot, a lot. More than anything, I think, possibly. But anyway, no drawers. Gonna be using like baskets, like storage bass cloth ones. I don't know, it'll look good. You'll see, just wait till the end and you'll see what I'm talking about. And I'm just gonna be using pocket holes for this because why not? I do have a domino machine, but I, it's kind of a pain in the butt to use, to be honest with you. And uh, this will keep it a little more DIY and pocket holes are fine for this, you'll see. It won't fall apart, I promise. Got the pocket hole jig set up, clamped down to the table, set for an inch and a quarter, which is the size material we're using. You wanna make sure you set that and the bit. Not that I've made that mistake. But we're gonna get the holes drilled in all of these cross braces. These are the ones that go from front to back. And I'll put the holes on either the top for the top or the bottom for the bottom. So you can't see them, not that you can see the bottom anyway. That wouldn't make any sense. But for these pieces that go between the fronts and the backs, I'll put the holes like on the inside or the bottom so you can't see them. And then these will be the cross pieces to support the shelves and keep the top and bottom the right distance away and, and for a little more support. So get all these holes drilled and then I'll get back to you. All right, so now that all the holes are drilled, we can get it put together, except for I don't have the right side screws. Imagine that, never happens. So I'm gonna go grab those real quick. Now we got the screws, get this thing put together. You guys have heard me say it a bunch of times, but you definitely wanna use clamps when you're doing pocket holes, because when you go to screw the screw in, when it goes through the first one and into the second, it ends up kind of pushing it out a little bit. And then when it sucks it back down, it pulls it in or pushes it out depending on where it's at. But clamping it will relieve that. So get some glue put on these joints and then I can get it put together. Sorry, I just left you guys on time lapse, but I kind of got in a groove putting these together and uh, well, now they're together. So I'm gonna move these out of the way and then I'm gonna get the wood down to cut for the shelving. So I need four shelves. I think they're 17 and a quarter by 24. So cut the wood for that and then we can get those glued up. <laughs>
All right, we're back out in the shop. I actually just got back from the cabinet shop. We ran all of the shelves and the top through the wide belt. I'll lay a clip of that right here so you guys can kind of see how that works. An amazing machine that any woodworker would love to have in their shop, but they're very expensive. So, like I said before, if you have a cabinet shop around you or, you know, a custom furniture shop that maybe has one of these machines, give them a call. They will most likely, you know, rent it out to you by the hour. So, usually you don't even have to do the work. You just take your stuff there and say, hey, can you run this through your wide belt? And they'll say, sure, it's 150 bucks an hour. But, you know, like this stuff only took 20 minutes. So, well worth it for the time spent. Plus that top actually was cupped a little bit from sitting in the clamps for so long. So it took that out as well. I'm gonna get these sanded and probably finished so they don't warp because they just got sanded and new pores came up to the surface. And anytime you do that, uh, you have potential for warping. So we don't want that. So let's get to work on these. The finish I'm gonna be using is from Atomic Finishes. Oh, oh, I can't, that's not even close. It's their wood oil. It's actually part of Bidwell Wood Company. I used to work there, you guys have been following, you know that. But I used this the whole time I was there and they actually just came out with it not too long ago. So I'll leave a link below for you guys to check this out. Super easy to apply, it's all natural, it's clear. So you just apply it like any wood oil and then let it soak in, maybe do another coat if it looks like it was really sucking it up, and then just wipe off the excess and you're done. Got to reapply it every couple years maybe, but the upside to it is if you get a scratch, you can just sand that area and then refinish it, just the small area, instead of having to do the whole top like you would with a, with a hard shell finish like lacquer or poly or anything like that. So I'm going to get to putting this stuff on and I'll catch up with you guys in a minute. So I actually recorded something between the last time you guys saw me on camera and now, as far as narration, but apparently I didn't, I don't know. I didn't push the button hard enough or so. It's not there is the problem basically. So you saw me sanding and sanding and sanding. So essentially I got these all sanded and ready for finish, which is gonna be this Rubio Monocoat Pre-Color, Pre-Color Easy? It's weird, I don't understand. Uh, it's a stain basically or a dye. It's intense black, because I wanted these really dark. I actually was gonna make these out of metal and paint them black, but I don't have any welding gas and metal, or it's, uh, I had the wood. So, they're out of wood. And I'm gonna use this, and then the Rubio Oil Plus 2C on top of this for the finish. So, get this put on, see what it looks like. Never used it before. So the bases have the pre-color on them and they are curing. I need to look and see how long it takes, but I figured I'd get the top back out if I don't destroy it. So I have to cut the ends off of this to make it final length and then I have to cut two angles on the backside so it'll fit into where it's going. And I have a new tool for that sent to me by the Home Depot through the prospective program I was talking about earlier. And uh, I'll get it out and we'll put it to use. I haven't even opened it yet. This is the new One Plus HP 18 volt high performance advanced technology Ryobi track saw. It's a really affordable. I'll link it below so you guys can check it out. But you can rip up to 260 linear feet per charge, which is cool. Um, it comes with a 55 inch included track, which is, I mean, it's not really. It comes with two that end up being 55 inches, but makes it compact. And I know like with my other 55 inch guide rail, I will often want just a small piece of it. So having two and just having to put them together might be nice. And it's cordless, I like that. So let's get this thing open and put it to work. It's got these two little, can you see them? Metal inserts right here. Loosen these set screws, I'm guessing, with the other Allen wrench that is in the saw. 
Just like that. Go in your home. Too good for your home? I'm sure there's a scientific way to do this. Just not the way I'm doing it. So you put it off a piece of wood. You have a lot of excess rubber hanging off here. Probably should have done it before I put the uh, riving knife on because I'm going to have to bring it back really far. Should be fine. You know what helps if you turn on the dust collection? Huh. Weird. I have little black rubber pieces everywhere. Anyway, now you have this piece nice and zeroed with your blade. So when you make your marks, you can just put this right up to the marks and you'll know you're gonna be cutting right where you want to. Got the top cut to final size. Now I can get it final sanded and finished. Get this thing put together and see what it really looks like. All right, it's actually the next morning. I ran out of time last night and I didn't have any finish. I thought I did, but I didn't. So I had to go grab that this morning. This is just Rubio Monaco Pure, which is a natural color finish. It's gonna match those shelves but give a little more protection for the top. It's what I use on pretty much all my tops. And I also need to put the equivalent of this, but black on the base. So I'm gonna put this on the bottom side of the top, get the black on the base, flip this over, final sand the very top, and then finish that, and then we can assemble. So, so we're I'm gonna do that now. Back out in the shop, all the pieces are cured enough to mess with. It doesn't fully cure for like seven days or something, but 24 hours is fine to handle and put together and get in the house and everything like that. But first, what you gotta do is attach the shelving. And to do that, I'm gonna use these, what they call tabletop fasteners or Z-clips. You guys have seen me use these before if you followed the channel very much. But what I usually do is use the biscuit joiner to cut slots. Um, wherever they're gonna go and I'll also use these for the top. So I'm gonna cut slots in the sides and all the you know bracketry to hold the bracketry framing, whatever, to hold the shelving on. So I get those cut in and around the top so I can put these on once it gets into the house. So like I was saying, I have the biscuit joiner back out. I actually have a thing I marked on here years ago, tabletop fastener setting. So I know exactly how far down to cut the joint so these can uh, sit in there and attach flush and act like they should. So I'm just gonna put some slots, one here, couple there, one there, around everything, and then we can uh, get the shelves attached. So this is the couch we need to take out. It's basically a fold out bed. Like these are easy. Just uh, throw those over there. But here's the problem. 
I think what they did was put it in through this window and then put the window in when they built the trailer. So it actually won't fit through the door. But I have a Sawzall. So maybe, maybe we'll try that. I can't figure out how it comes apart easy enough. That sounds like a more fun idea. Probably not the best idea though. Oh, this might be easier than I thought. Shouldn't say that, cause then it won't be. We are back, I have to get some pliers. Back. Sure. Oh sure, that one just pops right out, no problem. Now what? Could it be that simple? Oh. Well that's neat. I like that. Huh. Okay. Oh wow. The other one does the same. So maybe they didn't put it in through the window. Maybe it just comes apart. Like, you know, would be logical, but I'm not used to that. Usually it's just worst case scenario. I'll just bend it, because Got it. Oh, okay. That's loose. I'm getting much closer. These come off? Oh, these come off. Oh, well, they do now, anyway. Uh, okay. That back. The next question is these end table things, do I leave them or take them out? It's extra storage, but it might look a little weird. I don't know. Maybe we'll set it in here. Just take a look. Figure it out on the fly. Let's do that. Nope, whoa. Okay, all right. Okay. We're almost out. These are the heaviest parts. You ever just really hope something fits that's completely done already? That's, um, that's, that's what's happening right now. Okay. Oh, perfect, right at those plugs, that sucks. Like a glove, looks decent. Oh, mom's home. I'm just gonna leave the camera on, get her reaction. She probably won't even notice it's there. I'm just gonna act like I'm working. She might notice. She usually looks for it actually when I'm working, so she might not have a reaction. We'll see. Wow, why didn't you turn the cooler on? Uh -huh loud well it's <laughs> it fits yeah that's plus and you couldn't even lift the end tables up no 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 you wouldn't have had very much room no. in the middle i may even squirt them out a little more it's not put together yet it's just sitting i still have to attach the top Yep. Cool. More storage. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Good luck. See you later. What do you guys think? I think it came out pretty good. Fits the space nice. I really like the contrasting colors. It's a fairly simple design and it's kind of easy to break down so we can move it if we ever need to. Also, she'll have a view, but I'm gonna let her go ahead and decorate it because I'm not the person for that. So, really appreciate you guys watching. I hope this inspires you to get out in the shop and build something for yourself or for others. Holiday season's coming up. Keep an eye out for a video on that. And uh, in the meantime, check out this video right here.
I'll see you guys on the next one.